This problem I found on the internet is a pretty cool problem, which looks simple, but actually there's a little bit more to it. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. We want to find the number of integer values of k in the range of minus 500 to 500, for which the equation log kx equals 2 log x plus 2 has exactly one real solution. Do give this problem a go. I'm going to dive right in. So the naive thing to do is kind of just kind of dive headfirst into this and go, okay, well, let's, uh, you know, get rid of the logs and say kx is x plus 2 squared. So what I've done then, so I brought the 2 into the power and then got rid of the logs. And then if I expand and rearrange this, I get x squared plus 4 minus kx plus 4 equals 0. If I look at the discriminant of this thing, it turns out to be k squared minus 8k. And so therefore the solution or if I want this to have one real solution, I need this thing to be zero. So that implies that k is zero or k is eight. And so then the number of integer values would be two. However, that's extremely naive. And why is it naive? What's wrong with this? Well, there's nothing really wrong apart from one thing, which is kind of major, is the fact that logarithms, that there is a certain restriction, is that these inputs implicitly have to be positive. If, for example, x was minus 10, minus 10 plus 2 is minus 8. And this right-hand side does not make any sense. I cannot do the log of minus 8. So although this quadratic it boils down to has exactly one real solution when k is 0 or when k is 8, it doesn't really mean that this original equation here has exactly one real solution. It will have at most one real solution, but that's not really the question. So how do we approach this? There's a few ways that you can approach this. I'm going to do it by just splitting this into cases. And those cases are going to be dependent on k. You can split it into other cases, but I'm going to do it based off of k. So case one, when k is zero. So when k is zero, well, it's hopefully pretty clear there's no real solutions because the left-hand side doesn't make any sense. I cannot do log of zero. Okay, great. Let's deal with case two then. I'm going to make k negative. So what happens when k is negative? Let me call this equation here star. Well, what do we need? Well, we need a solution for star. So notice that if alpha is a solution of star, so in this case where k is ne negative, if uh, x equals alpha is a solution of star, well, that means that k alpha must be positive. And since we're assuming k is negative, that just means that alpha must be negative. But also I need that alpha plus 2 is positive, which means that alpha is bigger than minus 2. And if I put those two conditions together, I get that alpha must be between minus 2 and 0. Cool. So if k is negative, then the equation star in order for it ha to have a solution alpha, alpha must firstly between, be between minus 2 and 0. That's a necessary condition. Okay. And that deals with kind of the issues that could ar arise from the logarithms. And so now we can kind of assume we've met those conditions. So assume that alpha is a number between minus 2 and 0 and k is negative and we have this equation. Well, we can boil it down to this quadratic again. And now if I just use the quadratic formula on this, I get two solutions, which I'll call x plus and x minus, and it's going to be k minus 4 plus or minus the square root of k squared minus 8k all over 2. And so my two roots, if I just write them separately, in fact, let me call this one x minus, and so that's going to be k minus 4 minus, and then my positive solution x plus will be k minus 4 plus root k squared minus 8k all over 2. Okay, so we have our two solutions to our quadratic. And we're assuming in this case k is negative. Now we're going to zoom in on this number here. If k is negative, that term's negative, And this term here is clearly negative. So the numerator of this expression for x minus is definitely going to be less than minus 4. But then when I divide it by 2, I can say that x minus is definitely going to be less than minus 2. And this is actually quite good news for us, at least the good news in the sense that 
we can kind of be 100% certain that x minus is definitely less than minus 2. It doesn't matter what k is, provided it's negative, but we're assuming that because we're in case 2. x minus is definitely going to be less than minus 2. And so therefore, x minus will not be a solution to this original equation. It will be a solution to this quadratic, but it's not going to be valid for the logarithms. One of these two conditions will be broken. Uh, in fact, x plus 2 will be negative because x minus is less than minus 2. So x minus plus 2 will be negative. So this right-hand side won't make any sense. x minus is not a solution to star, which is great, which means that if we want this equation star to have one real solution, we need that solution to be x plus. So all we need to check is that x plus is between minus 2 and 0. Now, how do we do that? Well, thankfully, it's not too difficult. We can see that this number here is definitely uh, bigger than minus 2. How do I see that? Well, this is going to be minus 2 plus k plus root k squared minus 8k all over 2. So I just need to show that this part here is positive. And this is pretty clear because 8k, remember, is negative because k is negative. 8k is negative. So k squared minus 8k is going to be bigger than k squared. And so that means if I square root both sides, k squared minus 8k is bigger than the absolute value of k. Oh, sorry, the square root. And that means that k, which remember is negative, if I add its absolute value to it, um, that would make zero, but this is bigger than the absolute value. So that's positive. So this thing here is definitely going to be bigger than minus 2. I now just need to check if it's negative or not. How can I do that? So we're asking ourselves, is x plus negative? The answer is yes, it is negative. Because um, k minus 4 plus root k squared minus 8k over 2, we need this to be negative. Uh, so I can kind of just ignore the divided by 2. We need this to be negative. Well, this is negative if and only if uh, root k squared minus 8k is less than 4 minus k, just by rearranging that. And now I can square both sides of the inequality because both sides are positive. This is clearly positive, and k is negative, so 4 minus k is, positive, is bigger than 4. Um, and so this is true if and only if k squared minus 8k is less than 4 minus k squared, which is just k squared minus 8k plus 16. And just cancelling this down gives me 0 is less than 16. And that's true, full stop, whatever k is. And so therefore, um, this in initial inequality is true for all negative values of k. Amazing. So that means in case 2, my x minus solution is going to definitely be less than minus 2. So it is not a solution to star, the original equation. And x plus is definitely going to be between minus 2 and 0. And so not only is it a solution to the quadratic, but it's also a solution to our original equation because both the inputs of the logarithms are positive. And so therefore, we can be confident that, you know, this will be a solution. We don't have to worry. So when k is negative, any value of k works. So we get a bunch of solutions here. We get k can be minus 500, minus 499, all the way down to minus 1, like so. Finally, we just need to consider case 3, where k is positive. Now, if k is positive, um, we can again deal with this in the same way. We need let's let's make a conclusion like we did up here in case two. If alpha is a solution to this original equation, we need k alpha to be positive. And oh, that's a weird and. And we need alpha plus two to be positive. So this just means since k is positive in this case, we need alpha to be positive and alpha to be minus two. So if you just put those two conditions together, that just means alpha is oh, sorry, just bigger than zero. To put those two conditions together, all we need is alpha to be bigger than zero. So in this equation, remember, we're going to have the same roots. x minus is k minus 4 minus root k squared minus 8k all over 2. And x plus to equal k minus 4 plus root k squared minus 8k all over 2. We need one of these solutions to be positive. And the other one to be, well, whatever, yeah, negative, complex, whatever. Um, but we need exactly one solution to the quadratic to be bigger than zero.
Now, in order for there to even be real roots, which is like a necessary condition, we need k squared minus 8k to be at least zero. And it's not too difficult to solve that. That's true if and only if k is less than or equal to zero or k is at least eight. So because we're dealing with the case where k is positive, we need k to be at least eight. I'm going to deal with the case k equals eight kind of by itself. So when we get k equals eight, what does this, uh, we get two repeated roots, x plus and x minus will be the same. So when k equals eight, we get x plus equals x minus, and this will just equal to eight minus four plus zero all over two, which is two, which is positive, which is what we wanted. We wanted our alpha to be positive. We wanted it to have exactly one positive real solution. So that's great. We get a solution when k is eight. So that is another good number. So we can add that to our set that we had up here. Okay, so now from here on, we can assume, assume k is bigger than eight. So if k is bigger than eight, we have x plus and x minus being different. And as we said, we need one of them to be positive, one of them to be negative. x plus is clearly bigger than x minus, so therefore x plus has to be positive. So we need x plus to be positive and x minus to be negative. Now, x plus to be positive, well... This is pretty obvious because this square root thing is clearly positive and k is at least 8 or strictly bigger than 8. So 8 minus 4 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this thing here is definitely bigger than 2. So that bit is checked off. Great. Now, is x minus negative? The answer is no. So let's explore this. So x minus is negative if and only if um, k minus 4 is less than root k squared minus 8k. And now, since we're assuming k is bigger than 8, k minus 4 is definitely positive. Root k squared minus 8k is definitely positive. So this is true if and only if k squared minus 8k plus 16 is less than k squared minus 8k, which is true if and only if 16 is less than 0, which is not true. So x minus is definitely not negative. In fact, it's strictly positive. And so therefore... We do not have exactly one real solution, uh, exactly one positive real root. We'll actually have two positive real roots, which is no good to us. We don't want that. And so therefore, we don't get any additional values of k that are positive that aren't 8. And so therefore, the values of k which work here are minus 500, minus 499, all the way down to minus 2, minus 1. And then we can also shove on 8 into that set as well. And that there would be our final answer. Or in fact, the final answer here would be 501, because the original question here was asking us how many values of k work. So the answer would be 501. It's a really, really nice solution. In fact, I'm going to show you another solution, which in fact might, might arguably be even better. Let me just, uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Um, we're going to look at case two in a bit more depth, or in a slightly different way. So let's come back to this step here. We wanted alpha to be a solution of star. We needed it to be between minus 2 and 0. Now, we're looking at the case where k is negative. So when k is negative, it's pretty clear to see that k squared minus 8k, that's going to be positive. So x plus and x minus are two distinct solutions. And so we want one of them, we want exactly one of those two roots to be between minus 2 and 0. So either our parabola looks like this, because, and that we, you know, with that being x minus, that being x plus, so one of the solutions is between minus 2 and 0, or our parabola looks something like this, where again, we have one root that would be x plus this time, and this would be x minus. But the idea here is we need exactly one of the roots but to be between minus 2 and 0, and since this is a quadratic with two real roots, the only way it can have exactly one real root between minus 2 and 0 is if um, the signs at minus 2 and 0 are opposite. So in this case, uh, when I sub in minus 2, the answer is positive. When I sub in 0, the answer is negative. Or in this parabola's case, when I sub in minus 2, the y value is negative. When I sub in 0, the y value is positive. So what I could have done instead is said, you know, let f of x equal x squared plus 4 minus kx plus 4. 
in order for this to have one real root between minus 2 and 0, I simply need f of minus 2 times f of 0 to be negative. And that would mean that it precisely one of these two numbers is positive and the other is negative. And now I can just sub this in. So if you sub in minus 2 into this, um, you get 2k. And when you sub in 0 into this, you get 4. So we simply need 8k to be negative. But that's guaranteed because k is negative. And so that tells me that if k is any negative number here, this quadratic will have precisely one real solution between minus 2 and 0. And so that saves me having to do most of this kind of messy algebra stuff here. I mean, it's not super messy, but it's just an alternative solution. And I could have done something similar in case 3 where k is positive. In fact, we could have made a nice observation here is that this quadratic, uh, I've rubbed it off here, um, but f of x, so x squared, plus 4 minus kx plus 4, if I call that f of x, and I try and sketch that, well, it's a positive parabola, and it has a y-intercept, which is positive. And we needed this to have exactly one positive real solution. And the idea here is if it's a quadratic with two real solutions, there's, there's no way that it can only have one positive real solution, um, because... If you want it to cross there and you want it to have another real solution which isn't positive, that means either it's zero, in which case it looks like that, but then it doesn't have y-intercept 4, or the other solution is negative. But then the y-intercept, oopsie-daisy, has to be some n negative number. It can't be 4. So the only way it can have two positives, two real solutions, well, so sorry, what, like, what we've just shown is it can't have two real solutions with exactly one of them positive. So the only way this quadratic can have just one real positive solution is if it is a repeated root. And then we can just make the discriminant zero and we get k equals eight. So these are maybe some other alternative ways we could have approached the case two and case three. But it's a really nice problem and really emphasizes where we've got to take care when we're dealing with these things. Um, you know, we can't just ignore the original equation just because the discriminant is zero. It doesn't mean that those solutions work for the original equation. Um, but yeah, this, this question I, I found on a paper that's designed to help students who are looking to prepare for the TMU8, which is an admissions test you will have to do if you want to study maths at a bunch of universities and economics and computer science at Cambridge University. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on. I need to drink some water. My, <laughs> my voice is starting to hurt. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Please do give this video a like. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.